Hello Internet, Mr. BPG here, going live from the home studio, and it's been a while since I got to teach my music video class, and now that we're working from home this spring, I figured why not give my music video class a run from home, so over the month of April, I will see how many of these I can go live on. I plan on doing screen capture recordings and then voiceover recordings of the music videos that I'm going to be talking about all throughout this show. So let's get started. So just for some of you new to the channel, a little bit of my background, I've been working in and out of the media industry for 17 plus years now and have some history working with music videos but mostly i'm just a videophile someone who studies and appreciates the history of the art form and tries to stay as close to the pulse of what's happening in the business i work professionally as a photographer as well as a media producer so my eye is mostly for behind the camera and trying to create unique and interesting frames or just appreciate unique and interesting frames in media and what it can do for us and what it means. So I am for sale, if you like. But before we get started, let's talk here about music videos. So. Anytime I've taught this class, I've always liked to put out a just all-purpose warning that it is my belief music videos, or at least music, is its own type of drug. It is a mood-altering substance that you take in the air, and it can have many side effects to go along with it. Depending on the kind of music you listen to, it can hype you up, it can slow you down, it can make you feel it can open up your mind to ideas and things you may not have understood. Uh, I remember teaching this class in the past before and introducing people to new artists and having their eyes opened in a way of, well, I knew they were there all this time, but I've never actually sat down and listened to them. So that's what we're going to be looking at here is the idea that music itself is a drug. And the music video is a visual representation of what that drug's trip is. So, quick disclaimer, you know, I am not any type of music expert. I'm going to be focusing on just breaking down and appreciating the media that I have consumed and try to break down some of the basics. Uh, today I'm going to start off with uh, English band Alt-J. <clears throat> so, there are many types of music videos, but the five basics that I've seen is performance-based music videos, story-based music videos, live multi-cam recordings of performances, lyric videos, or abstract stylized videos. The idea of a performance video or promotion is that you are going to create a type of music video that features the band and them performing. You're trying to sell them as a brand. So you're promoting them, you're promoting anything else that wants to tie into the visual aspect, but the main goal is to draw attention to this new band. Now at a, some types of let say that again. Some types of artists prefer to go with a story-based music video, where you may be taking the lyrics as a jumping-off point, the music as a theme or mood setter, and then telling a visual story on top of what's being heard. Or you can go the complete opposite and do something that is in contrast. Or you can mix up a couple of those music video styles. Live camera recording is exactly as it sounds. And then 
Lyric videos were popular once before and are now rising in popularity due to the fact that now that most of us consume our music through various uh, web sources, lyric videos offer a unique opportunity for you to truly follow along to the words of a song versus being taken into someone else's trip through the music video. And then, of course, there's just complete abstract all style art for art's sake and all of these types of music video we will break down throughout the class today we're going to be focusing on an artist that mainly goes into story based music videos so understanding the story based music video you want to see how the structure of a song is broken down into the structure of storytelling so and this is not typical. Some songs break it up, but in most popular or pop music formats, the song is going to start with some sort of an introduction, followed by the first verse chorus, and then the second verse chorus. In some cases, there may be a third or a fourth verse chorus. And then you may have a, bri a bridge that leads you into a final chorus. But modern musicians don't necessarily follow the same formula some of them lead with chorus and go into verse uh, there is no no rule that says you have to follow this i have just broke seen in the history of music videos how many if not 90 percent of the music videos i've seen and are still coming out love to follow a similar format of either verse chorus or chorus verse with an introduction and an end. Now the storytelling side, most all stories follow a three act structure. In keeping it simple, thinking that we have a music video which is short, you have to be very conservative with what you put on screen. You want to make sure in your music video you are only dazzling the eye of the consumer while the music sneaks in through the ear. And what's seen by the eye should either be to promote or glamorize the artist, or in the case of storytelling, take them through this moment in time for the story you're trying to tell that matches up to the song. In that case, the first act of the story follows the first verse in chorus. So in most songs, the first verse and chorus will give you the setting, who our characters are, and basically set off what these characters are about. What do they desire? What do they want to accomplish? What is happening? By the second verse and chorus, you'll find that the story introduces conflict, the adventure, or some element of mystery, or some element of all of them together. Now, this conflict, adventure, and mystery will be, hopefully, the most interesting moment in the character's life we're seeing on screen. There's an old writer's adage that's passed along. Is this the most interesting moment in your character's life? And if it's not, then why don't you show us that? So in Act 2, this is where we really get into the meat of what is it you're trying to tell through the song and what video you want to use in support of that. In the third act, you have resolution. You wrap up the story, you bring it all together, and hopefully instill in your audience whatever message it is you're trying to send. So... Music videos can cover a lot of different topics, right? You have all these different options for a type of music video, but it's all going to be based on the song that you're producing for. So in this case, we're going to look at a series of Alt-J music videos in a story-based structure. And while there are many types of subjects you can break into, Alt-J is very heavily looking at the subject of life and death. Even their name, the English rock band formed in 2007, Alt-J, is a folk 
Electronica, I believe is the genre. Uh, they released a four-track EP in December of 2011, showing basically the symbol's letter as uh, Delta, or capital Alt-J, which is the way to produce the triangle in the keyboard. Uh, as trailblazers in modern music, uh, unique and contemporary, Alt-J used the delta sign, which is usually used to indicate change or difference. And each of these music videos featured here in this Colors trilogy features life and death moments with characters at the most interesting moment in their lives that follow a very specific story structure of beginning, middle, and end. Act 1, introducing characters and setting. Act 2, setting off the adventure. And then Act 3, resoluting it. So now I'm going to switch to the voiceover because there's no point in trying to uh, play the video. Sorry, live audience. I'm no one. Uh, this will all be edited in the end anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to voice over my commentary based on these music videos. So the first one here is going to be Alt-J, and the song is called Breeze Blocks. First frame, you can see a quick and easy setting of a lot of trouble. So my suggestion, if you're trying to fully understand everything going on, you have to go through the comments, you have to listen to the song, hear the music, listen to the lyrics, and then break it down. From this point on, it's just going to be me voicing over as if you were watching. So if you tune into the class a little late, I'm sorry if none of this makes sense. Also, appreciate the different color schemes that are going on with these videos. They follow a red, blue, and green color palette, usually single monochromatic, and various shades of lights and darks. It's interesting that the first video, if you look at the emotional color triggers of uh, light, the way it affects our brain, the color blue represents intelligence, serenity, authority, honesty, and trust. But in this music video, it is anything but. So immediately right off the bat, the video starts with very plain imagery. You see a person laying in a bathtub, completely passed out, with a breeze block on their chest. There is nothing else in the frame that you can see except for bubbles coming from out of the water. We then cut to a close-up of a man, possibly in the same room, most likely based on various editing, holding his hands up in disbelief. And again, the song sets the moods and the tone, but the visuals break you into this world. They're very specific, showing only extreme close-ups of the husband or the man's ring and the woman's lack of ring in the bathtub. Now once again, is this the most interesting moment of your character's life? Yes, because it appears that these two characters are in a struggle of life and death and it appears that she already lost this battle. But then almost eerily, the way the music brings itself in, we start to notice that time is reversing. We're going backwards in time through this video, almost in a way that if you were looking back at an event, trying to picture everything that just happened in this moment. And it's right at about that moment of the end of the first verse chorus that we're introduced to that mystery. And then halfway through, or right at the second chorus, we're given more hints to the actual moment, or the meaning, 
of this mystery we're trying to find out. Obviously, we know one character is going to die and one character is going to mourn at the end, but we have no information other than what happens here at the end. So the music video takes us back through the three-act structure, giving us a setting in characters, and then setting up a mystery of what brought us to this moment. So right before the bridge, there's a moment of pause, and then just an unbelievably interesting combination of shots. Well-lit, dark blue, two characters that we know are in a fight of life and death, seemingly lovingly roll over each other back to where they just came from. And it's here, as we build up in the bridge, going into the third act, that we're introduced to a new character. Great visual design on the new character introduction. To this point, we've only ever seen two people fighting. Now, we're being thrown a ton of information. Our new character has stripes across their shirt. Our main character had a plain shirt. Our new character has straight, messy hair. Our old character had curly hair. We notice quick flashes of close-ups on the rings, only to start to uh, put together that the character who's dead at the beginning of the video was actually a person who had kidnapped one woman and was ready to stab in the back the man of the, the scene. The video is very plain and obvious to show the hands. Each time they show the left hand to indicate who is married to who and who is not necessarily married in the scene. And in probably the most tragic moment, sorry, I should say that again, in another moment of tragedy, geez, this video is filled with tragic moments, the video, as you watch it in real time, shows you the husband coming back, discovering the person tied up, and then leaving her to be tied up. There's a lot of layers to this video, and what I find interesting about it, and I think everyone who sees it for the first time would agree, there's just so much to take in that you really have to just stop and think. You have to, or want to watch it again, to really see everything and what this music video does well is it uses this emotional trigger to set up a visually cool scene cool is in blue where you have a lot of poly positive psychological leanings in that color only to place the setting the characters in a mystery where we know the ending but we are told the story in reverse order, finding out the important bits of information along the way. And it's done masterfully, visually, taking a song that is very odd. The, the lyrics, I believe, have a lot to do with the Where the Wild Things Are book. But it all comes together into just a hauntingly chilling but beautiful sad story told in a music video in under three minutes that if you take in the right way headphones on a screen to watch and the time to focus it can really speak to you so in the second example we're looking at alt j something good and in this video we have the red color palette which is not a bait and switch. This time they're serious. Red is the idea of having excitement, passion, energy. It is the color of action and desire. And this video is all about passion, action, and desire. So to really understand the love of this video I have is to just try to describe this first shot using words and not videos. It starts on just a circle. It slowly pulls back to reveal that that circle was the sun in the reflection of a sword being held by a matador 
as it was pulling a rose close. Using very subjective and objective framing, we're brought in during the first verse of the song into the setting, the character, and desire. We know that we're in a bullfight. We know that our character is the matador and the bull, and we know that there are two desires. The matador is going to kill that bull, or that bull is going to kill the matador. And as we go into the verse, the first chorus of this song, things start to get interesting and strange in the visuals, and then the rose falls, it splashes into a pool of blood, and our matador feels himself lifted off the ground with the horn coming through his abdomen as his world spins around, and it appears that he has lost the fight. And then we get into the second verse. And throughout the second verse, we're just seeing a lot of very objective frames where it appears that the matador has been speared and is being dragged through the bullfighting arena while the crowd screams in terror, throws their food, throws their chairs. So we're given an adventure and we're given conflict. And the interesting point of this conflict comes as we come to the bridge of the song. It's at the bridge of the song where the character, our main character, our bullfighter, is making a choice. He's already lost this fight. He knows that he's probably on his way out. So he has a choice of going out quietly or taking out the bull. And I think it's interesting that we cut back to a picture of a young girl watching, and she's calm. Because he picks up his sword, and in just beautiful stylized lighting and color, the sword comes down, and we repeat what we saw at the beginning. A circle, then we cut to see a shawl fall through the circle. Then we cut to see the same shawl fall, where it looks like an eye blinking, and then we zoom out to see that we were just seeing the reflection in his eyes as he's laying down next to the bullhead in front of him. And as he gets up, we get a good close-up of his hand connecting with the bull that he's killed. And then through a circle, the third circle, three like the triangle, we see the headless bull dancing in the background as the matador stands and watches before ending on the triangle. Now, again, a lot to unpack in this video. Once again, this band loves to, or at least the music videos based on their work, look at life and death as that binary 50-50. But currently, I've been studying the work of first responders in hope of being able to pitch in differently than just being a teacher. And with my limited understanding of anatomy and physiology, I know for a fact that no matador who's been speared through the heart and out the back would be able to stand and watch that. So I like to believe, after interpreting and watching this video, is that he was never actually stabbed. For him, the dropping of the rose turning into the blood, the feeling of spinning around and losing, must have been that rush for him of maybe getting his first kill in the bull arena. And what we're seeing is through his heart, the way it must feel for someone who's in the most interesting moment of his life, but is conflicted about what they just want. And then the last of the Alt-J music videos would be the uh, green video. This one is called In Cold Blood, and like all the other Alt-Js, it has a lot to do with death. But while in the first trio, Delta Triangle, you had a love triangle. Now, 
obviously had a husband wife with their rings and someone from outside the ringed section who was willing to kidnap and murder them before it got reversed on them. In the second video, you have three circles, the one at the beginning, the one in the middle, the one at the end, that take place with two people, or two life forms, a bull and a human, going at it in the ring. In Cold Blood, the third of the Alt-J color trilogies, I'm calling it, we have a different main character, and the story is much more abstract than anything they've done before. Going back to the emotional triggers of color, remember that green gives you the color of hope, growth, refreshing, balance, and reassurance. And while this video definitely shows a lot of balance, it's hard to say how reassuring it could be. So, again, I will comment while breaking this down and eventually edit this into a music video. So I, I find it interesting that the very first frame of this one has that 50-50 life and death right in it. We're in a forest, the color palette is green, and our image is slowly trucking in or dollying in to a wide shot of a mouse on top of a dead tree. The tree has just been murdered and the mouse is on top. And there's a narrator describing this mouse as our character, talking about how much of a survivor it is. Then the first verse into the first chorus of the song, take us on the daily adventure of a mouse, wandering through the forest. Now in this video, compared to the song in the previous videos, the lyrics were in support of the visuals on screen. In this video here, the lyrics are in contrast to them because the lyrics are mainly just talking about some random pool party, but what we're seeing is a mouse having to rely on its instincts to survive in the wild. It's able to avoid the snakes. It's able to avoid the fox. It's basically able to go anywhere through the forest and mostly be safe. We get a, a cute shot of it crossing a river, crossing a snail. And then eventually the only thing that really shows any danger to the mouse is itself. Because as the mouse explores the forest, looking for food and just trying to make a living, the only thing that even gives the mouse any danger is when he goes out on a limb and a sound in the distance distracts him enough to he nearly falls. Now while we're watching the mouse fall, we're hearing what sound to be gunshots in the background, I wonder what that's all about. And in an amazing cut, the mouse shows up to a severed hand. And here into the second verse chorus combo, it, you know, just like in any good story, takes the setting of the mouse in the forest, and it, our character being this mouse, and introduces it to the conflict and adventure. But the conflict has all just happened off screen. All those gunshots we heard before were apparently whatever was going on at this event in the music video. But where we're at now is watching the mouse explore the aftermath of this conflict, of this adventure. And basically are forced to watch in long drawn takes of dollies and zooms these dead people being forced with the morbid reality of death once again being focused then we hit the bridge of the song and we get a transition you have one last character who's alive but he's standing in front of a truck and you have two more characters alive in the truck making out once again you have a trio one, two, three, and 
Only two of them are going to make it out of this situation. Well, what's interesting about this video is, once again, the mouse is our main character. All these other characters are basically background in the story that we've been following to this point. Well, there may have been something interesting happening in the background, nature was just on behind us living without us even noticing it. And that humble wood mouse would just go on another day, hanging out in the back of that truck, going on new adventures and finding new places to be. So that's about all the time I wanted to cover today in the Alt-J Colors trilogy. Make sure if you want to post any follow-ups or thoughts you might have, leave a note in the comments. Let that analytic do its thing. And thank you for sticking to this point if you made it this far. I will try my best to turn around the voiceover and add it to the video so that this lesson makes even more sense once I uh, once I'm done through the editing. And I promise I will pick a more light and fun and exciting subject for next week. It's not always going to be all about life and death, I guess. The past few years I've been stuck in a loop of just being interested in that 50-50 you get every day you go out. And uh, these music videos are just haunting beautiful stories that I don't necessarily know I can explain fully in words because it's a visual medium of a druggie taking you there. So take with caution, be safe, and see you next time. Class this over, media schooled, done. See you later. I'm going to do something to make sure I don't. Hey, let's look at me again. There I am as a photographer. Bye, everybody.